All right, all right. So yay! I actually have this problem all the time. I teach. <laughs> I t no clap. We don't have time. I teach a class at um, Boston University, and uh, I have this issue all the time. Every single one of the students is a Mac user. Uh, there's like two Windows users. There's 30 kids, and um, I have this problem every week. I should have known, but it's KubeCon. I mean, come on, Linux. So my daughter drew this for me. Um, and this is all the stuff that's been going around my head for the past year. Um, this talk is all about everything I've been working on over the past year. And it's a lot of different stuff, maybe too much, but as some, in some way, it all um, comes together. And uh, that's what I want to talk about um, because it's all about Kubernetes, because everything we do is, is cloud native now in Kubernetes. And, um, and I've been working with Kubernetes since 2015. I knew absolutely nothing when I started, but I've worked my way up now. I am a principal software engineer. I work in emerging tech at Red Hat, and I always say that I just glue things together. I take uh, different tools, um, usually containerized, and I figure out new ways to use them or um, new, new projects to um, bring together, and that's kind of my specialty. So a lot of, I've been working a lot of, with the edge, and I've seen three main areas that seem like they're really not um, solved problems. I work with some customers, a lot of solutions architects, and these three areas, um, you know, how do you update your system at the edge? How do you update your workloads running at the edge? and um, observability. So I've been working on all of these separately, but um, I'm going to attempt to show you a bit about putting them all together. Um, and we all know that open source has paved the road for edge computing and um, that Kubernetes is the backbone of the internet. That's what I tell my kids when they ask me what I do. Um, but Kubernetes at the edge, or edge workloads in general, uh, they have um, challenges that you don't have at traditional data centers. And we all know this, um, but it's the limited hardware, um, you know, rem remote locations, um, uh, the things I already mentioned, how do you scale, how do you update. Um, the, the, the main idea is that your edge operating system um, is best if it's mostly immutable and mostly um, read-only. Uh, if you think about how containers took over the world uh, you know, years ago, it's kind of the same idea that um, everything you need for your workload is baked into the container image. And extending that to the edge works really well. Um, and, um, and at Red Hat, we've been doing this for years with our PMOS tree. So if you remember, uh, CoreOS joined Red Hat some years ago, just about when we were updating OpenShift um, to OpenShift 4. And they had their container Linux operating system. And Colin Walters, who's like my, my hero at Red Hat, he's amazing, he had Project Atomic. And they were both very similar ideas. They both were um, OS tree based, container native, um, optimized for running containers, immutable, um, mostly read only with a couple of directories where you can save your state. This works the best for Edge. And we're, um, we used it as, a, as the host system for OpenShift, OpenShift 4, and it has been that way for, for many years. But, um, some exciting work, the stuff that I'm the most looking forward to working on this year and the coming months is really extending this concept of containerized operating system to the edge. So there are some projects you might want to check out, like um, <clears throat> Universal Blue. Uh, there are a few companies doing this, Red Hat. Um, but if you're um, in the... Ha if you're in the um, market for buying an operating system, might I suggest Red Hat Device Edge? Because it, 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 it has, re, we have recently rolled this out, and, and it is just that it's our PMOS tree-based operating system um, that is best suited for edge management. Um, the, the thing I'm, I'm really looking forward to telling you is when you treat an operating system image like a container image, 
that opens up all of the container OCI tools for, using, for updating your operating system, <clears throat> such as container files or Docker files. Um, you can simply, uh, with some RPM OS tree magic, and uh, there's a new project, Boot C, that you might check out also, you can set up a container file and start from your operating system image, uh, do some updates, and build the new commit. You can, where Kubernetes comes into this is, I have a Kubernetes, I'm gonna try to show this, I don't know if we'll have time, but. Nope, never mind. We're gonna have to meet like elsewhere, because I just really, well, I'm just gonna tell you about it then. So, I have two minutes left. Thanks, Benny. <laughs> So Colin has this um, demo where he has auto-update systemd service on his Edge host, and he has completely locked it. He's removed sudo, cut off SSH, um, and there's just a simple Edge workload running, a web server. And uh, what, that, what that leaves is um, a completely locked down Edge device where it can get its updates from a container registry. So um, later today, I'll be talking about SIGStore and digital signing. And so the demo was going to be a, um, showing a private SIGStore stack running on Kubernetes. And you build your operating system image through whatever CI CD pipeline you you have, uh, you sign digitally sign it with SIGStore. Um, you can set your policy at your Edge device to only be able to pull down uh, those um, images that were signed by the identity and the service account that you expect. And um, how RPM OS tree works is you pull down the image and it automatically updates your system and boots into the new operating system. It's fully, um, it's just as if you're, you're, you're starting up a new container. It's super cool. It does, it's, it's, a, it's a bootable container image with the kernel inside. Um, so workload updates um, are also a, a hairy subject with Edge. Everybody does it a different way, but the one thing is for sure is it has to be automated through a central location. So that's where Kubernetes definitely um, helps. You can take your automation platform of choice. I'm familiar with Ansible Automation Platform. Um, and uh, it's all through container images. Again, um, uh, the, uh, when it gets when it gets difficult is um, when you start to introduce AI, and we are definitely all starting to introduce AI and AI inferencing at the edge, um, training your models at the data center. That's where you might want uh, to step it up a notch and use Kubernetes native workflows at the edge. And th that is where these low footprint Kubernetes distributions uh, fit in. So Red Hat has MicroShift that they're um, rolling out currently. It's a um, lightweight enterprise-ready Kubernetes distribution. Uh, super cool. And Ricardo um, will be, with Lockheed Martin, will be talking about that um, this week. And so I definitely suggest you check it out. Uh, but there are, there are others, and um, being able to, to just seamlessly use your Kubernetes language from the edge to the data center from your CI CD pipeline and roll it out on the edge um, is important. Sure, if your edge workload can be run with a few Podman or Docker containers and a systemd unit file, great, that's probably best. But um, if you need more, then um, you might want to check out MicroShift. And I'm out of time, but the last thing is observability. <laughs> um, the key to observability at the edge is the Open Telemetry project and the Open Telemetry collector. Um, the Open Telemetry collector enables this single point of connection from your edge workloads to a gateway on your central observability stack. And uh, it works really well, and that's what uh, a lot of our customers and um, to technical architects and solution architects were all um, working on bringing solutions that are really centered on the Open Telemetry Collector and the project. Um, I do have a few more talks. 
today uh, at, on Kepler and the Ob Observability Day, and then um, Overshift Commons today too. So maybe you'll catch me there. But um, please, like, ask me questions about anything you saw here, and we can talk more. I apologize. Yep. Thanks. <laughs>